Shalom, this is your arc. Yah is magnified. Coming back with another informative video. I titled this video Ohio Courts of Claim. But before I tackle this subject, as always, I must state for the record I'm not a lawyer. I do not practice law and I do not pretend to. All of my videos are for informational and educational purposes only. They're all facts and all truth. Nothing more, nothing less. So, with that being said, let's get to it. Okay, so now I'm doing a video again on the uh, Ohio course of claim for the simple fact of the matter is there is channels putting out misinformation. And like I said, man, the person who's putting out this misinformation, he's like very illiterate. You know, he, he, he do not have any type of comprehension skills. He don't know how to file a claim in federal court or in state court. And then all his clients are losing left and right. And plus he's charging a healthy amount of money. He's charging about two or three thousand dollars for his services. So now, with that being said, let's hear him out before I can rebut him and let you all see the truth and hear the truth. And like I said before, this truth shall make you free. So with that being said, let's listen to this clown right here. Patience to bring in suit in the Court of Claims of Ohio is what? Generally, there is a two-year statute of limitations on claims for monetary damages brought against the state of Ohio in the Ohio Court of Claims and only the, the okay that is true it states that generally there is a two year statute of limitation on claims for monetary damages brought against the state of Ohio in the Ohio Courts of Claims okay so now your your question is when does the two years start when does the two years start for the statute of limitations we're going to go over that, but let's continue. Let's go back a little bit more. And only the, the most you can get, I think it's 10 racks. Look it up. If, if I'm not sure, look it up. I want to say 10 racks. You know what I mean? And he says that the most you can get when you're filing a lawsuit in the uh, tort, I mean, when you're filing a lawsuit in the courts of claims, in Ohio, the most you can get is $10,000. Like I tell y'all, man, be very worried where y'all getting y'all information from, man. These guys don't have a clue of what they're talking about. I'm going to show you that you can get way more than $10,000 when you're filing a claim in the in uh, course of claims in Ohio. So this is for all my people in Ohio. Y'all should be on y'all jobs, man. You know, getting y'all self together. There's no reason why y'all shouldn't be attacking these courts. Okay, so now, uh, with that being said, let's go and see what else he said. Let's go there. People in Ohio, go to this website. Let's check out the forms. Claim form, instructions. Look at this shit. Look at this shit, man. So you're going to be right here. Claims for $10,000 or less. So how in the fuck you going to get all your money? Huh? I'm glad you asked that question, Ritardo. This how you're going to get your money. Now, as I told y'all before, man, the guy doesn't have a clue of what he's doing. He's illiterate. He cannot comprehend. The guy's a complete sham. He's a scam artist. Why, well, you are a scam artist. I called you out, chump. And I'm going to continue to call you out. So now, as we all see on this screen, it says claims versus the state. Clearly letting you know that you can bring your claims against the state in this court, which is the court of claims in the state of Ohio okay now as we can see 
it clearly states, because I told y'all the guy don't, he lacks comprehension skills. He don't know what this means when it says administrative determinations for claims less than $10,000. Meaning, if you bring your claim into the court of common claims for any, for any amount less than $10,000, you will not go before a judge, but you will go before the, administra the administrative process, which will be a clerk of the court. And I'm going to prove that as well using all the Ohio codes. Okay, just to back up everything I'm saying. Like I said, all my videos are all facts and all truth. Nothing more, nothing less. I wouldn't put anything else but facts and truth out there. Why? Because I'm a man full of integrity, man. I don't got time to play no games with these scam artists. But let's continue. Now, at the bottom, where it says judicial cases, claims in excess of $10,000. Let you know that any claim that you bring higher than $10,000 into the claims court, you will have to go through the judicial process, meaning before a judge, not an administrative officer or a clerk of the court. Okay? So it's two ways you can bring your cases. Or your case will be heard depending on the amount of money you're filing in a claim against. So say if you're only filing, again, $10,000 or below, you will be going before a clerk of the court. But if your amount for your claim that you're claiming, say if you're claiming five, let's say if you're claiming five hundred thousand dollars, then you're going to go before a judge, which is the judicial process. Okay. Now that I put that out there, let's go and prove this point even more. So with that being said, let's get there. Okay. So now as you all can see on the screen, we're coming from codeohio.gov. Clearly letting you know that this is a government website for the state of Ohio. I didn't make this website up. This is their laws. It's their rules. I didn't make none of this up. I'm just pointing you all to the light. And you all just must proceed and do what you got to do. Okay? But now, as you can see on the top, it says Ohio laws and rules. I always tell y'all, before y'all bring y'all suits into these courts, follow their laws. Follow their rules. Make sure you follow everything proper. Like I said, there's proper rules of etiquette for doing everything. You're just not going to bring them into this court and file a suit without following the rules first. But let's continue. It says courts of claims. Right? Then it says 2743.01. State liability definitions. As used in this chapter, A. State means Ohio. Okay? So, state means the state of Ohio. So because it means the state of Ohio, that means the state of Ohio is liable for claims or can be brought in to be held liable for claims in the court of claims. Okay, but let's continue. Including, but not limited to, the General Assembly, the Supreme Court, the Office of All Elected State Officers, and all departments, boards, offices, commissions, agencies. Child support is what? An agency. It is a state agency, but let's continue. They are they omit it every time. Let's continue. Institutions and other instrumentalities of the state. Okay? So now we know that we can bring the claim against the agency in the course of claims for all my people in Ohio. All my videos are all facts and all truth. Nothing more, nothing less. I had no reason to lie. Too much integrity on my end. To play any type of games. But let's continue. Now, we also had the nut job. Don't understand what statute of limitations mean. He's telling you all, if you've been on child support for longer than two years, then you passed the, uh, uh, the statute of limitations. Let's find out when the statute of limitations actually occur. Let's go. Let's go to the statute of limitations. That should be 274316. Let's go there. Here we go. Yep. 2743.16. Statute of limitations. Compromise of claims. A. Subject to the divisions. B. Of this section. Civil actions against the state permitted by sections 2743.01 to 2743.20 of the revised code should be commenced no later than two years after the date of accrual of the cause of action or within any shorter period that is applicable to similar suits between private parties. So now, they're causing act, they're causing harm to you daily. 
So as long as they're causing harm to you, you can bring the, the suit into court. Okay? If they take your money this month, then A, that's a new accrual of a cause of action. You can bring them to court. If they're taking your money, uh, uh, they haven't taken your money for two years now and you've been off for two or three years now, then you cannot bring your suit. Why? Because you should have filed it within the prison whatever was causing the injuries to you. Okay? But once they stop causing the injuries and you didn't bring them to court within a two-year period, then you can file your claim. But as long as they're causing injury, there's always a, a new time to, the, the time for a cure for action always dies over. I just can't keep taking from you and taking from you and robbing you every day and expecting not for you to go back and file a suit against it. No, it says from the time from which the action of or the date of the accrual. So now, if they took your money last week, that's a new accrual date. If they took your money last month, that's a new accrual date. Okay? So again, you all fall into the statute of limitations. Only those who do not fall into the statute of limitations are those who been off a of child support for, for longer than two years and haven't uh, filed their cause of action. And they haven't been taking their money for that longer period. Okay? So now let's stroll up again. So now we're going to do the difference between uh, the administrative process for claims less than $10,000. And the judicial process for claims more than ten thousand dollars. Let's see the difference. Let's do the administrative uh, one first. That should be forty three ten. Let's go there. Forty three point ten. Here we go. Twenty seven forty three point ten. Civil actions determine administrative administratively by clerk. Okay, so now the clerk going to file the claim or the cause of action. Now let's read this. It says a civil actions against the state. For ten thousand dollars or less, like we just read on the other uh, at the beginning of the video, shall be determined administratively by the clerk of the court of claims. So now, again, if you bring a case for less than ten thousand dollars, to uh, you know, if you file your claim against the agency for less than ten thousand dollars, then you will be going before an administrative clerk, not a judge. Okay, so let's continue. It says, except that the clerk. Is not required to administratively determine a civil action of that nature and the civil actions was commenced by a person who has been found to be a vexatious litiga litigator under section 2323.52 of the revised code. Okay, but basically I've been showing y'all the difference. I can go through all that, but that's the difference. Okay, any of your claims less than $10,000. For my people in Ohio, if you file a claim for ten thousand dollars or less against the agency, then you will be going before a clerk, not before a judge. Now let's go for those who filed a claim more than ten thousand dollars. Let's go to twenty three, twenty seven forty three point three. Let's go there. Okay, here we go. 2743.3 course of claims, right? But let's pick this up at uh C1. Let's go to C1. C1. A civil action against the state shall be heard and determined by a single judge upon application by the claimant or the state. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court may assign a panel of three judges to hear and determine a civil action presenting novel or complex issues of law or fact. Okay? Concurrence of two members of the panel is necessary for any judgment or order. So, you'll be going before a judge. When you're filing a claim for higher than $10,000. The other one is an administrative clerk for claims less than $10,000. But let's show up. Let's go to, let's pick this up at the top. 2743.3, course of claims. This is hereby created a court of claims. The court of claims is a court of record and has exclusive original jurisdiction of all civil actions against the state. Like I tell y'all, they have jurisdiction over the state issues to file your suit. So why keep going to these federal governments when they clearly tell you they do not have jurisdiction to hear your lawsuit? It's clear, but let's continue. 
it says, hold on, uh, against the state permitted by the waiver of immunity contained in section 2743.2 of the revised codes and exclusive jurisdiction of the cause of actions of all parties in civil action that are removed to the courts of claims. The court shall have full equity. Excuse me. The court shall have full equity powers in all actions within its jurisdiction, and may entertain and determine all counterclaims, cross claims, and third party claims against what? Against the state. It gets no clearer than that, man. It gets no clearer than that. I keep telling y'all, man. But now, since it mentioned twenty-seven forty-three point two, let's go there. Twenty-seven. Hold on, let's stroll up. Here it is. 2743.2. States waive immunity from liability. You see? So now, clearly let you know that the state waived this sovereign immunity. So why keep going to these federal courts trying to force them to waive sovereign immunity when they're not going to do that? You have to get their permission in order for them to waive sovereign immunity in the federal court, which they're not going to do when you can just sue them in their own state. What the scriptures say, bring your problems to your brother first before you take it anywhere else and reconcile your problems to your, with, between you and your brother. So you're taking your problems to the person who caused injury to you first. The state, handle your issues with the person who's causing the injuries. You know? Well, let's continue. Uh, it says, A, the state hereby waives its immunity from liability except that provided for the office of the state fire marshal in division G1 of section 9.60 and division B of section 3737.221 of the revised codes and subjection to division H of this section and consent to be sued and have, hold on, and consents to be sued and have its liability determined in the course of claims created in this chapter in accordance with the same rules of law applicable to suits between private parties. So again, clearly letting you know that once you bring your claims into the court, then the state will hereby waive their immunity if you file your lawsuits in these courts correctly. Okay? Bring the proper causes into the proper jurisdiction to get proper remedy. I cannot stress this enough. So again, that's all I'm going to do for today. For you all who need my help, hit me up in my email at yahismagnified at gmail.com. Everybody, study the show that selves approved. Don't take my word for it. Go back. Go over it. Try to rebut me. Try to prove me wrong. You know, show me a federal case where someone went into the federal court, sued the child support agency, and won. Show me a federal court where somebody went into a uh, federal court and sued the employees of the child support agency and won. That's all I want to see. Prove me wrong. Make me a believer. Until then, I'm showing you all where jurisdiction is at and how to go and seek that remedy. Okay? So again, for all those brothers out there fighting, continue to fight. Be careful who y'all getting your information from. Okay? Yeah, we've all been bamboozled for way too long. The people we thought knew what they was talking about, they don't have a clue, man. They do not have a clue of what's going on. Beat the state, end the state. You can sue the state in the state. You can sue the state counties in the state. You can sue the state agencies in the state. You can sue all of them in the state. Okay? This is more facts, more proof, more truth. So with that being said, you all be blessed, man. Again, like and subscribe. Share my videos. Also, uh, again, if you need my help, hit me up in my email at yahismagnified at gmail.com. Alright? So for everybody out there fighting, keep your heads up. You know, continue to study. Again, I cannot stress that enough. Studying is the key for you all to be free. So with that being said, Shalom.